Welcome back painting friends. This is one of a series of three different animals with hot cocoa paintings. So you get to decide what color you want your background to be. Gray, blue, I'm gonna make this a lighter purple. Okay, so you have a choice of your background color. If you wanna see my other videos, check below and you will see the links to those. So the colors you're gonna need are one of those three colors. Um, white, brown, red, orange, yellow, and black. You're going to need my favorite paintbrushes, my one inch flat brush, as well as my 10, six, and one round brush. Don't forget to have a rag and a cup of water handy for keeping your brushes clean. And let's get started. Depending on what color you want your background to be, you're going to paint your entire background. But what you're going to do is you are going to take large amounts of white and make lines that go straight up and down. So the first thing you're gonna do is add some white lines going straight up and down because we do not want a boring solid background color. We want it to have some variation. So by adding a couple of lines of white, that'll help us with that. I am not gonna wipe my brush off. I'm just gonna go in with that purple and I'm gonna start to pull that purple in. So like I said, you could do purple, blue, or gray, but they're all gonna start the exact same way. So I'm gonna put myself in speed motion, paint all three of my backgrounds so that you can see the difference between the three and you can make a choice which one you want to make your animal on. So as you can see, I've got three backgrounds done, but I'm only gonna make an animal on one of these. Um, I really liked how when I did my gray, cause my canvas and my easel was still wet, um, that some of the blue and purple kind of snuck in there. So I'm not gonna lie, that might be the one I work on right now. But what I want you to do is I want you to think about which of these three colors you like best, the blue, the gray, or the purple. Then pick your favorite animal and follow along with the videos. We're gonna let these dry and when we come back, we're gonna add in our animal. All right, so in our series of three animals, this is one of our animals. We are gonna do our polar bear. So I have my number 10 round brush and some white paint, just to kind of lay out where our polar bear is gonna go. So to start this off, I'm gonna make a gigantic arch right here at the base, okay? This is gonna be my polar bear's body. I just wanted to kind of lay it out. On top of that arch, I'm gonna put a big, huge circle for his polar bear head. And then his ears, they're not really circle. They're more like a teardrop shape. So they're a little bit narrow at the base and they get bigger as they go out. And I'm gonna copycat that on this side over here. Now for our polar bear, we're gonna go ahead and paint the whole thing in white. That way, if you need to put a second coat of white on because maybe some of your colors are showing through, um, you'll have some time to add a second layer of paint to your polar bear. I could take this brush, I can wipe it off and wash it off. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some snowflakes to my sky while I'm waiting for this to dry. So I'm gonna zoom you in right over here, show you a couple different snowflake ideas, and then we're gonna fill our background with snowflakes. So snowflakes can be done a lot of different ways. You can use the back of your paintbrush with some white paint and you can just add dots, okay? So that's one way to make a snowflake. Another way is to make six lines, which looks like this. You would take a letter X, and then put a third line through the center. Now from there, you can add any type of detail and design you want to your snowflakes. Um, sometimes you could just do lines that point out, lines that point in, um, circles. I mean, really it's kind of your choice. But I like to make sure that all of my snowflakes legs, I'm going to call these legs, all six legs of my snowflake, have the same design on them so that it's not overwhelming. So if you get a cool idea for a design, 
make another snowflake and have that design be specially for that snowflake. Um, the last thing I wanna show you for snowflakes is you can always use the back of a pencil. I love using the back of the pencil because then I get really nice big snowflake dots. So I'm gonna zoom you out. I'm gonna paint in my snowflakes and then we will finish off our polar bear. All right, let's let our little polar bear dry. When we come back, we'll add in his fun details. With a totally dry polar bear, let's add some texture to this friend. I've got my number 10 round brush and I'm gonna take a little bit of white paint and all the way around his body, I am going to make small little lines. Okay, polar bears are very furry little guys. So I'm just gonna make small little lines kind of going up to the points all the way around his body. So on his ears, on his face, and on his body. From there, we're gonna make his belly and his um, nose space. So with some white paint, I'm going, well, I'm gonna add some blue to it so you guys can see it. So with some white with just a little bit of blue paint, almost no blue paint, I'm gonna go right up here and I'm gonna make hmm, a line down here. It's gonna be kind of a house-ish shape, but that house-ish shape is gonna be a rounded top, okay? Oh look, it looks like a cupcake. We're gonna make a cupcake shape. So around the top, two lines that go inward and then a line across. So with that rounded shape there, what I'm gonna do is then just take white paint and kind of blend that light blue in towards the center of my nose. Wanting to keep the center mostly white, but then when it comes out to the, the outside, keep it a lighter blue. And then I'm just gonna kind of Blend that color out a little bit so that it just kind of blends into my background. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with his belly. So mostly white, a tad bit, just a tad bit of blue. And I'm gonna make a line that goes kind of on the same shape as his belly. Okay, again, I'm gonna kind of pull that color in, add more white in the center to kind of blend it. And then as it kind of comes outwards, I'm going to let it just kind of fade off into his belly. Wash that brush off and wipe it off. His cute little ears, we're gonna use mostly white paint with just a spot of red paint. And we are going to just kind of dab and dabble right in the center of his ears, just a little bit of pink color. Wash that brush off and wipe it off. Now you have to decide what color is your coffee cup gonna be. So I'm gonna make the coffee cup on this guy. Hmm, I think I'm gonna make it orange. So I've got my orange paint on a clean number 10 brush. And what I'm gonna do with that orange paint is I'm going to create a long skinny oval. And that oval is going to have a curved line coming down on both sides with a curved line at the bottom. I can go ahead and paint the front of this coffee cup in, sorry, my bad, hot cocoa cup in. And then I'm also going to make a little handle. And this handle, I'm gonna make it be a boxy handle over here on this side. Go 
Kind of looks like the letter C, doesn't it? Wipe that brush off. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of white paint and I'm going to add some curved white lines over here on this side, just to kind of show that there's a little bit of form to my mug. And then with some brown paint, I'm just gonna fill in this space inside for my hot cocoa to be. I can use my finger with some white paint on it to drop in a couple of marshmallows. And then with my finger again, I've wiped it off so I don't have that white on there anymore. I'm gonna use some black paint and right up here above his nose, I'm gonna make two tall skinny ovals. His nose, I'm gonna use my number 10 round brush and I'm going to make a curved line on the top. And I'm gonna have it come down into almost a very gentle triangle at the bottom. From there, I'm gonna take a line and I'm just gonna make a small hook up and then back over. Sorry, I have a baseball hat on today and it just hit my canvas, or my phone. I can use the back of my brush to add just a couple little dots on his cheeks. how cute this guy looks so far. I love him. All right, we're gonna let this dry. When we come back, we will add in all of our final details on our polar bear. All right, we've got a dry-ish polar bear. Let's add some final details to him. I've got a clean number 10 round brush and some white paint. We're gonna make his little paws coming from this edge over here around his cup. So these are just gonna be like curved line so on one side it's going to look like um, a letter C and on the other side right here it's going to look like a letter D. Now if it covers, if it doesn't cover up your orange in the first try, don't worry you can always add a second layer to it, okay? But these are just some curved lines to kind of cover up that space. I am going to do just what I did with his nose and his belly, add a little bit of that blue on there just so that it's got a little bit of accent to it, and then kind of brush that color in towards his body. I'm gonna add some little highlights to his eyes with the back of my brush. I'm gonna add a small white dot to the top of this eye, a big one, and then a small one. So same thing, a big one right here, and a small one. I can take my itty bitty round white brush and add a small curved line on his nose with three little dots at the end. How adorable is that, right? I'm gonna take some purple paint 
and I'm going to add a heart on his coffee cup. So I've got my number 10 round brush with some purple paint. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight to that purple paint by adding some white to one spot of it. Just kind of brushing it in so that it fades off into that darker purple. I think I'm going to add a little bit of white highlight to the cup as well. So I'm going to go back to my number one round brush and I'm going to add just a couple little curved lines on this coffee cup handle as well as on the rim up here and back here as well. Now let's talk about steam coming off of our coffee. We want to have what's called a dry brush technique, which means that you could take some white paint on your paintbrush and kind of dab it off onto your towel. You don't want a lot. You want your brush to be mostly dry, which is called why it's called dry brush. And then from there, you can start at your coffee mug and you can make like little hearts of steam or have it floating off into space. I'm gonna kind of stick with some swirls. So I'm gonna start here and just kind of add some swirls of steam coming off of my coffee cup. Now I don't want it to necessarily go over his face, but I'm okay if it gets close. And then with that little bit of leftover paint, I could just kind of add some extra little lines around my steam just to make it look like it's definitely a steamy cup of hot cocoa. I think I am gonna add a little bit more white to this because that orange is indeed popping through. Yeah, I'm happy I'm doing that. Definitely think it needed a little bit of extra coverage in there with that white. But when you're finished, you know what to do. You need to find a color that's gonna show up well on your canvas and sign your name. Don't forget that I never get to see what you're doing at home unless you post it to our Facebook page, Painting with a Purpose. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Painting with a Purpose, so you're kept up to date on all of our latest tutorials. And remember, as always, stay kind, stay creative, and stay safe. Have a great day, friends. Bye now.